bit uh, to make sure we are streaming live. Um, if there's any uh, issue, okay, just give me a second. There's usually a time lag, therefore, um, me talking right now would not be directly. So looks like we are live and there is um, no audibility issue so therefore I can start off the session. Uh, definitely I will be watching the live chat so if you have anything to say you can type it on the uh, live chat itself. Okay, uh, the topic for today is um, Mollusca and Echinodermata. Okay, Mollusca and Echinoderma. So if you uh, watched my previous sessions you would see that I have been uh, talking about uh, Kingdom Animalia, uh, I've been doing it in like small, small parts, uh, a very brief in, uh, topic coverage and a brief MCQ session, okay? Uh, so this is uh, more like a sneak peek for you guys uh, as to what happens in our um, sessions at Anacademy, okay? Uh, so you can, I'll tell you more about that. Uh, my name is Nivedita and you will uh, see at the bottom, at the description, uh, section you will see uh, many links okay you'll have a link for my profile as well so if you like my sessions if you uh, you'll, you'll have a brief idea of how my sessions will be and if you like it you can go there click on my profile and then it will take you to my profile you can follow me if you follow me every time i'm online every time i come alive or on any session it will be a visit okay it'll give you a notification saying that whether there is live um, so, uh, why an academy? What's so special? Um, obviously, we uh, give two kinds of classes. Uh, we give you uh, free sessions as well as uh, subscribed sessions. Okay, uh, I'll talk to you about uh, the free sessions and subscribed sessions uh, before we go ahead into the topic. Uh, so, my free sessions usually are there almost on a regular basis. You'll find me uh, most of the time at six o'clock. Okay, uh, my paid. Uh, uh, the subscribed services are within a system called as batch. So we have batch systems. Okay. Uh, separate plus courses are also there. Uh, but there's something called as batch where your topmost educators teach you PCMB. Okay. Physics, chemistry, math, biology. So in this batches, different batches are there. I teach biology for the English and Canada. Both are there now. Okay. So there are two batches. I take up um, uh, biology for the batch. Okay, so complete uh, syllabus covering. I will do, be doing it within a span of eight months. Um, and uh, tips and tricks, topic wise question, full length mock. So in eight months, you will not just be prepared for your board, KCT, probably for NEET. Okay, so that is uh, my assurance from uh, for on part of NEET. Okay, uh, not on part of uh, uh, biology training. I'll definitely do it for you. Okay, and uh, if you become a plus member, make sure you. Uh, uh, join you enroll in the batch okay you enroll in the batch uh, i have a code we all have a code my code is nivedita life okay um why could, why i'm talking about the code why i'm talking about the um see like i told you we have two sessions two type kinds of sessions on our app okay these are short brief sessions here like only for half an hour little topic coverage little mcqs there little uh, uh, on our uh, Academy platform, an academy platform, a lot of uh, uh, good co coverage, topic coverage we do. Also, we give you a good amount of uh, MCQs per session. So, every session usually has a little bit of concept coverage and a little bit of uh, MCQs. Okay. So, half and half. So, special classes are free. So, I usually would suggest you guys who are watching us on YouTube to join us uh, at our app. Our link is also there in the description box. Um, you can directly go to watch our free sessions. You watch our free sessions, you'll understand how our uh, subscription sessions could be, okay? So plus is the subscribed version. Uh, what I usually say, it is uh, premium control, uh, uh, content at affordable price. Usually it is 2,250 per month. That is the trial of. I agree, uh, seems a little high, but uh, you can see our special classes first, the free classes, okay? Watch our free classes. Then if you feel that it is good enough for you, you can take up our 2021 12-month course. Now, what will happen if you take up the 12-month plan is it will come up to 1031 per month. Okay, per month 1031. You can, it's 12,375. You can pay it by EMI also. EMI plans are also there. You can pay it by that. Okay, 
uh, it, uh, uh, imagine you are getting 1031 for all the subjects, PC, MB, and not just one educator, any educator's class you can go and sit in. Okay, so in that way, if you see it is in, uh, affordable, single subscription, unlimited access, okay, we have live classes, we have one special feature called as uh, doubt clearing sessions, okay, that is really fun where students constantly on a particular topic of that, uh, what topic I'm doing, like currently I am teaching uh, the central nervous system, so I was working on that, so any doubts, today there's a doubt clearing session, so students can ask me doubts, live doubts, okay, and I'll be clearing them for them. Uh, then we have quizzes, some people keep bi-weekly, bi-monthly, batches are there, I take a biology for the batch, full and mocks are also there. Uh, my code is Nivetha Live. I am telling you my code is, when you put up an educator's code for the subscription, it will then, then show you all the offers. Plus, you have additional 10% off. Okay? So, when you put an educator's code, it will show you the offers. My code is Nivetha Live. Okay? So, let us start off with today's topic. Uh, so, today's topic is Molaska and Echinodermata. Uh, welcome to all the students who have uh, joined us. Um, uh, glad you are here today and all the ones who are watching this as a recording also, <laughs> welcome. Okay, uh, let us start off. Ec Molluscan and Echinodermata, this is our topics for today. We have been dealing with all the previous file I have already dealt with. Coming a few file also, I will be doing it in the coming sessions. Let us discuss what is Molluscan. Okay. In my last session, I did Arthropoda and Analyta. So, I told you that Arthropoda is the largest phyla that is there with respect to the number of species, right? With respect to the number of species, it is the largest phyla, that is Arthropoda. Second largest is your Mollusca. Okay, the second largest phyla is Mollusca. That is uh, based on the number of species that are there. Okay, now these can either be terrestrial or aquatic. Okay, so uh, some of them are found on land. Your examples, you have seen snails, you have seen slugs. Okay. Then we have aquatic. Aquatic are the ones which can either be marine or they can be freshwater. Okay, your octopus, um, uh, cuttlefish, all that come under aquatic ones. You would see if you're talking about their organ level, uh, you, your, their uh, organization. I to, I've told you we have cell, cellular organization followed after that it will be tissue, then organ and finally organ system. Right? Even we are organ system level. So even mollusca shows organ system level. So, all the cells have become tissues. Tissues have come together to form organs. Organs have come together to form systems. So, this is organ system level of organization. Okay. Uh, we'll talk about a few common things whenever we talk about any phyla that we have to focus on. One is its symmetry. Symmetry means uh, if you divide the organism along one plane, it should give two equal halves. That would be called as symmetry. Now, if it is, you can possibly, if it is uh, an organism like this, and you can cut it along only one plane to give two equal halves, that you call as a bilaterally symmetrical. Bi means two, lateral sides, right half and right half, uh, left half. Okay, so these organisms are bilaterally symmetrical. Radial symmetry, on the other hand, are you can cut it along any plane, and that will give you two equal halves. So that is not here. Here it is only bilaterally symmetrical. Higher organisms, uh, I usually show bilateral symmetry. Right from Askel this we have been seeing bilateral symmetry. Uh, from Platyel this actually. We have been seeing bilateral symmetry. Okay. Then we have the blasty. Now, blasty here is triploblastic. Triplo, matlab three. Okay. Blast layers or derm layers, germ layers. So, we have ecto, matlab outside. The outermost layer is ectoderm. Then we have endoderm. That is the innermost layer. Ectoderm, endoderm, innermost layer. And in the middle, we have mesoderm. Okay, so these are the germ layers. In the embryonic form, this is how they would look. As a mass of cells with endoderm inside, mesoderm in the middle and ectoderm on the outside. Now, uh, when this is called as triplo, three, right? So, therefore, triploblastic. Okay, uh, when we talk about this, the concept of coelom comes. I have told you what a coelom is in one of my previous sessions. Coelom is a structure which is a cavity. Now, any cavity is not a coelom. Okay, you should remember that. Any cavity is not a coelom. Coelom is one cavity where it is lined by the mesoderm. Okay, if the lining of this cavity should be mesoderm. Then only we will call it as a coelom. Otherwise, we don't call those other cavities as coelom. So, you would see in that organism, outer ectoderm, inner endoderm. Mesoderm is divided into two. One half is towards the endoderm, the other half is 
towards the, I mean one half is towards the endoderm, the other half is towards the endoderm. In the middle there will be a cavity. That would be called as coelom. Okay, coelom. That would be called that. So you will find it right in the middle. Fine. Now based on, uh, there are a few more features for me to talk about. Uh, based on whether they have, uh, they have both the sexual organs on one organism or not. Right. So here in this case, the male and female are separate. Okay. They are dioecious. Okay. Male and female are separate. Um, here oviparous. Oviparous matlab, they will lay eggs. Their young ones are hatched from the eggs. And they show indirect development. Indirect means um, there is a larval stage. There is metamorphosis happening. There is a larval stage which does not resemble the adult form. So there is metamorphosis process happening. Little more on the uh, mollusca. Okay, these have calcareous shells. So if you remember mollusca, you should think about snails first thing. You know, they have a shell, right? So we have calcareous shell. Now these shell in some organisms, they are inside the body. Usually they would find it outside. In some, they are a little inside, for example, your octopus, um, cuttlefish, um, all that squid. They have a little on the inside, not on the outside. Body is unsegmented, okay? Actually, if you consider truly, it would be a little segmented. Uh, but uh, it's a smooth kind of body. That's why for your level, we say it is unsegmented body. And there are differentiations in the body. You have three main layers. You have the head, you have the foot, and you have the visceral hump. Okay, you have the head, foot, and visceral hump. Uh, foot is muscular, so therefore you've seen how slugs move, right? How snails move. That is because of their foot there. Okay, so that foot is muscular. Then we have the visceral hump. Now, visceral hump, if it is, this is the visceral hump, you think. This is a mass. Okay, this is a, a, a mass of uh, different kinds of organs which are present here. Now, on this, there's a thin spongy layer. Okay, thin spongy layer of skin. On the visceral hump, there is a spongy layer of skin. That is called as mantle. This layer is called as mantle. Now, is there a space between? Can you see? There is a space between the visceral hump and the space between the mantle here, this cavity. That is called as mantle cavity. So, visceral hump covered by a mantle. And this space here is called as mantle cavity. Okay, mantle, oh, it's written here. Okay, let me write it down. Oh, there seems to be some issue with the pen. Just give me a minute. Ah, okay, yeah. So, mantle cavity. Okay, sorry for the name. Ah, now, in this cavity, it will have a feather like gills. Why are gills required? Okay, they look like feathers. Why are gills required? For respiration, right? Majorly gills are for respiration. But in case of mollusca, they also do the function of excretion. Okay? All the waste is actually released from the uh, gills itself. So, therefore, here it has two functions. Respiration as well as excretion. Now, if we talk about the head, in most cases, the head will have some tentacles. Okay? From the head, you have tentacles. For example, you should remember... Uh, uh, I'll talk about the foot-like structure. I'll come to it. Okay. Uh, you, you can think about octopus and uh, cuttlefish for the same. Mouth. Their mouth has um, uh, uh, a tongue. Okay. A rasping organ. Tongue-like structure. Rasping to hold something. To uh, scratch. Uh, to remove food. So it can easily eat radula. So you can actually Google out a, a video. Which I cannot obviously show here. Uh, a video on snails eating. You can see them eating. Um, a huge, huge uh, pieces of cucumbers. You wouldn't think they have that much of capacity. The way these slugs look all slimy and small, they can really uh, consume a lot. So you can check uh, the uh, radula there. Okay. Just brief a few examples that I can show you here. Phyla, which is your apple snail. Okay, this is phyla. And the slug is over here. It is actually laying eggs. So what I have put the image where it is laying eggs. I told you it is oviparous, right? So, it is laying these eggs. In series, they lay their eggs. Okay. Uh, this is uh, phyla. Uh, then we have loligo. Loligo is a squid. Okay. We have octopus also coming under the same group. Cuttlefish also coming under the same group. These are called as uh, cephalopoda. Okay. Under cephalopoda group, they come. Uh, kingdom phylum, 
paperish file of class under that class cephalopoda okay uh, why we call them cephalopoda is because this is like their head right this is their head and you can see tentacles coming out of the head region so it looks like the head has a foot it looks like the head has foot that is why it is called as cephalo matlab head and poda is equal to feet therefore cephalopoda it is called as cephalopoda then you have dentalium here these are called as elephant tusk shells okay elephant or tusk shells just tusk, tusk shell denta denta matlab teeth na so dentalium elephant teeth okay they are not actually it looks like the tusk right it looks like the tusk of the uh, elephant here the organism is not there this is just a dried uh, tusk inside there would be an organ organism so you must have seen the spiral shells also uh, when you go to the beach inside in some cases there are organisms there your uh, slimy uh, molluscan will be inside it when you are holding it may not be there put it put a little uh, beach water on your uh, sea water on your palm and let it be just give it a little shake like how it would happen in the sea those will come out you can actually see it okay so these are different kinds of uh, mollusca also the uh, mussels that you must have eaten i'm not sure if you are a non vegetarian you might have had these okay mussels now these mussels are um, your bivalves they have two uh, shells right which open and close like this so it is called as a bivalve okay bivalvia we call it so mussels that is consumed by people commonly even apple snails come up in consume okay so these are uh, about the mollusca let me briefly go and talk to you about echinodermata before i go to the mcqs okay now echinodermata it is um, it has also a uh, its endoskeleton which is calcareous and we call these as ossicles okay ossicles we call them now it is called as echinodermata because echino means spiny the word echino means spiny dermata is skinned so we call them as spiny skinned organism it is not our skin okay not like how we have skin but it is called a spiny skinned organism that is a kind of dermata these are exclusively marine you will not find any fresh water which is the other phylum if you remember any other phylum which was exclusively marine only two phyla we study here in this uh, that we have studied till now are exclusively marine one is your tenophora right it's a minor phylum other one is this echinodermata these are exclusively marine no fresh water form at all okay um, yeah then organ system level okay so here also uh, your tissues have come together to form organ organs have come together to form systems so organ system level radially symmetrical okay these act, uh, organisms i told you from um, platy helminthes on we have been calling them as bilaterally symmetrical yes they are bilaterally symmetrical in reality echinoderms because of evolution it is actually bilaterally symmetrical okay because you can see that in their larva they have bipinnarial larva different kinds of larva they have uh, but in their larva you can divide that into right half and left half only they are not radially symmetrical but what happens these adults are mostly sessile okay they are stuck to one place or they don't do large amount of movement therefore if, uh, for their uh, better uh, survival rate okay they have adapted back to radial symmetry they have adapted back to radial symmetry so they are actually supposed to be bilaterally symmetrical they have made an adaptation for survival into radial symmetry it is called as pentaradial most of the case i'll show it to you through that image okay so echinodermata under this we have triploblastic same thing that i explained earlier on ectoderm endoderm ectoderm endoderm in the middle mesoderm coelomate that is the cavity is covered by um, your uh, mesoderm okay that is what i was talking about earlier now digestive system is also complete that means it has a mouth as well as a so complete or incomplete digestive system is based on the presence of the opening that is either it should be it should have two openings then it is called as complete one opening is for uh, the mouth which is for ingestion of food one is for uh, throwing out of food excreta that is anus so here mouth is on the ventral side so this is the organism mouth would be at the bottom ventral side and on the top side would be your anus okay so specific uh, amazing feature that they have here is water vascular system now water vascular system is uh, again not to confuse with the water canal system in case of porifera porifera is canal because it is a canal water is flowing through canals 
Here it is vascular system because um, uh, they pass through small uh, two, uh, pathways and uh, they help in locomotion, okay, through tube feet in some cases. Okay, you, it will help them through that because it will become make the water will enter and make the feet sturdy so that it can move. Okay, for capturing and transport of food and also for respiration. So it is water vascular, not canal vascular system. Reproduction is sexual. Fertilization is outside the body. So the male and female uh, release their uh, gametes outside the body where it fuses. Development is indirect because there is a larval form. Okay, so examples we have over here. One minute. Examples we have over here uh, uh, from different groups. We have uh, Asterias, which is your common starfish. If you see, I was talking about radial symmetry. These are pentamerous radial symmetry. Okay, you can cut it along five different planes to give two equal halves. Okay, five different planes to give two equal halves. So that is called as pentaradial symmetry. Okay, then we have uh, your brittle star. This is called as the brittle star where you can see five elongated arms here as well. One more special, this thing is called as sea urchin. Okay, sometimes you tend to stamp on them. They are very painful. They sting. Some of them are poisonous. Okay, so echinus. Echinus means uh, spiny. Okay, sea urchin. You can see, uh, this is how it looks when you're, it is in sea. Okay, it is a lot of uh, spine coming out of it. It is a style. It is stuck to one place. Uh, this is called as sea urchin. Now, if you see, you can, uh, they have a very beautiful shell, very nicely designer kind of set, uh, shell that you can, uh, 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 you would see on the, that is actually sold because they are very beautiful, you can keep it on. Um, also, amongst this is something called as uh, your sea cucumber, which also is, it is like a small cucumber looking like structure, looks uh, like a spongy, velvety uh, organism. Uh, which has the tendency to throw out a part of its uh, viscera. It, it has a tendency to throw a part of its visceral organs and those will form a new organism that is called as autoformy. Okay, that is called as autoformy. Okay, so with this brief concept coverage is done. I'll talk about MCQs now. Remember when uh, all these topics, when it comes to our platform that is on your app, an academy learning app, uh, you will see that uh, we cover a little more in depth and you get much more MCQs. Okay, uh, and then in the MCQs, a small poll comes up. You have to click on the answer. Here, I you can type it in the chat section. I will be watching it because there's a time lag. Uh, I may not see it at the same time, but I would definitely see it. Okay, uh, there we give you a poll. So you can just click on the answer. The first question, animals of which group are not freshwater? Crustacea, Insecta, Echinodermata, Sponge. So if you are ready with an answer, you can type it in the live chat. One minute. Yes. Okay. So uh, in this, uh, you would see that uh, Crustacea comes under Arthropoda. You have the prawn and shrimp. One is fresh water. One is uh, um, uh, your sea, marine water. So obviously it is, you would see fresh water forms. Insecta, also there are insects which are fresh water forms as well. Okay. Uh, Echinodermata, uh, these are only marine. Okay. These are only marine. So therefore this is the answer. Sponge are usually most of them are marine, uh, but uh, you also see spongilla, which is a freshwater form. So that is also there. There are exceptions. A few freshwater forms are there, but majority is uh, this thing. So they have asked which is not freshwater, and here it is only a kind of dominator. Next one. Elephant tusk shell is a dentalium, nautilus, limax, octopus. What would be the answer here? So one of the teeth that we consider. So it 
dentalium is your elephant tusk shell. Nautilus comes under mollusca. I don't know if you must have seen. These are uh, spiral organisms. You would have seen their shell. Okay, very pretty shell. And from here, they would have tentacles. These tentacles are sometimes hidden. Okay, so this is Nautilus. Then you have Limax. You have seen the king, the king crab, horseshoe crab. Okay, octopus you are very well aware of. So, elephant tusk shell here is dentalium. Okay, then... Aristotle's lantern. Where do you find Aristotle's lantern? Jellyfish, sea anemone, sea lily, sea urchin. Okay, where would you find it? You can type in at the live chat if you uh, are aware of the answer. Okay, so here it is in the sea urchin. It is in the sea urchin. So, um, if I, I'll just quickly go to that image. Okay, so here the sea urchin at this region would be its mouth and this region somewhere in the middle, uh, it would be the anus. Okay, so the mouth has uh, uh, an arrangement of uh, teeth. Okay, uh, it is like a uh, proper, uh, very pretty arrangement of teeth, uh, which uh, Aristotle uh, said looks like a lantern. Okay, lantern, you know, no, uh, the light character. It looks like a lantern. That is why it's called as Aristotle's lantern. So, you see Aristotle's lantern uh, in sea urchin. Which is a uh, special feature of evisceration is form in, found in uh, chordata, uh, echinodermata, annelida, sea dentary. Go ahead, you can answer this. this okay i have uh, easy way for you to know now is that i did only mollusk and echinodermata so obviously the answer has to be here echinodermata but in general when such a question comes evisceration matlab viscera is removed out e evisceration right viscera is removed out so if you see in case of sea cucumbers okay sea cucumbers these are not vegetables they look like cucumbers that is why it's called as sea cucumbers okay they throw out a bit of their viscera, evisceration, they will throw out a bit of their viscera. And that viscera has the capacity to form a new sea cucumber. Okay, so it is forming by itself. That's why autoformy, autoformy and evisceration. Next one, the animal that transforms from bilateral symmetry to radial symmetry in its life history is hydra, cobelia, starfish, sponge. Quickly answer this. Okay. So here it is bilateral symmetry to radial symmetry. I told you only a, a organism which has returned from bilateral symmetry to radial symmetry is under echinodermata, right? Uh, because they are sessile, they prefer uh, they're at least sedentary, if not sessile. Okay, they prefer a radial symmetry. Okay, so here amongst this, this is uh, your echinodermata. This is cilentrata, cilentrata, porifera. So only this, that is starfishes, echinodermata. Cephalopoda is a class uh, of animals uh, which the notochord extends up to the head, the foot is located on the head, mouth is located on the head, or D, the head is fused with the thorax. What would be the answer here? Give you a few seconds to answer. Uh, usually, uh, when you are watching this on our app, you get much more time. Uh, uh, 30 seconds is general poll time, but I do add depending on your need. So, concept of notochord, I will teach you in the coming uh, session. Okay, that is, I'll talk about hemichord data and core data. That time I'll talk about it. Okay, so that is about notochord. Uh, foot is located. Now, what is cephalo? Cephalo matlab? Head, poda, matlab, foot or feet. So the head, the foot is located on the head. The foot is located on the head. That's why we call it as cephalopoda. Okay. Uh, head is fused with thorax. Where would you see it? You see this in case of uh, arthropoda. Some arthropodans have cephalothorax. 
Okay, one minute. Let me grab one minute. So here you would be cephalo thorax. Okay, that you see in case of arthropoda. Some arthropods are so. Okay. Next one. In which phylum is what vascular system found? Protozoa, arthropoda, porifera, echinodermata. Go ahead. Remember, you have to see what are vascular. Right? So, what would be the answer here? Vascular system, what a vascular system is found in echinodermata. Porifera, it is what a canal system. Okay, never to confuse between these two. There are two different structures. Okay, so here it is water canal system. Here in echinodermata is water vascular system. Which of the following animal's body is covered by a calcareous shell, unsegmented with a distinct head, muscular foot and visceral hump? So you have four images here. Okay, you have to click on the one which is the correct answer. Awaiting answers. <laughs> okay, so here clearly calcareous shell, head, foot, and visceral hump. Three segments. Clearly, it has to be mollusca, right? It has to be mollusca. A molluscan we have to find. A prawn is an arthropodin. This is an echinodermata. This, on the other hand, is a cephalopoda, correct? Cephalo head, poda. Cephalopoda will be a molluscan. Therefore, this. This is a sponge. Okay, this is a sponge. So, octopus is an example for mollusca. Two feet are characteristic structures of starfish, jellyfish, crayfish, cuttlefish. What would be the answer here? Look at the irony. We call all of them fish, but none of them are actually fish. Okay, starfish, jellyfish, crayfish, none of them. So, this comes under mollusca. Okay. Your cuttlefish, crayfish comes under arthropoda. They look like your lobsters. Okay. Then jellyfish comes under sea lentrata. And then starfish, this comes under echinodermata. Yeah. So this is where you will find the water vascular system as well as the tube feet. This locomotory organ, starfish comes over here. Okay. And the last one, eye of the molluscan group that uh, resembles uh, vertebrate eye. Here, bivalvia, gastropoda, pelicipoda, cephalopoda. This you will need a little bit of evolution biology uh, chapter uh, connection. Okay, so uh, we say uh, we talk about analogous organs. Under that, we say that uh, octopus or squid eye, octopus eye specifically, resembles the eye of vertebrates. Okay. Uh, they resemble the eye of vertebrates. So they have the same function, but their origin is different. They have the same function, but their origin is different. Such uh, organs we call as analogous organs. Okay, more on this I'll talk to you when I'm talking about uh, evolution chapter. So it is called as analogous organs. So that vertebrate, which I said about octopus, octopus is a cephalopoda. So these are names under uh, mollusca, bivalvia uh, and pelicipoda are those your, your muscles, oysters, have two shells opening closing that comes there gastropoda your uh, uh, snails okay slugs and snails come under gastropoda so cephalopoda is the one which shows it the answer is cephalopoda with that we're done with today's short session okay uh, if you like the session don't forget to give us a like click on the bell icon also to get more content from us okay uh, we have our free classes and uh, subscribe classes i would suggest come to our free classes first and see how the classes are. And then if you want, you can uh, take up a subscription. Okay. Do come to my sessions. Uh, you, my profile link is provided below. Go to my profile. Uh, download the app. Put your phone number and uh, email ID. Confirm. Verify it. Go find Nivedita. Okay. The link for Nivedita is directly given there. Go to my profile. Follow. Okay. Once you follow, every time I'm live, any session I'm live, it will tell you that Nivedita is live. Okay, so batches are also there and in this batch the topmost educators teach. Okay, four subjects are there 
TCMB, I teach biology there. Okay, I'll, I hope to see you at my sessions. My code is Nivedita Lai. Um, let me, uh, it would be great to have you at my sessions. Okay, um, next session will be upcoming very soon. It will tell you whenever I'm live here also. So put on our bell icon. Uh, I will see you in the next session. Okay, till then, happy learning. Stay safe, stay focused. Bye-bye.